congregation may be seated, and this time I invite forward our baptismal party. I have a very anxious helper. Her name is Avery, and she gets to hold that to give that to Aunt Cassie. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. We also learn from the word of God that we are all conceived and born sinful, and so are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. George Robert Frisk, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart, marking you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. It is your task as sponsors, parents, and congregation to confess the, with the whole church the faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose name this child is to be baptized. After Robert has been baptized, you are at all times to remember him in your prayers, put him in mind of his baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid that he be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God and be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and that as he grows in years, he would place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, bring him to the services of God's house, and provide for his further instruction in the Christian faith, that he comes to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and thus abiding in his baptismal grace and in communion with the church may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This then do you intend to gladly and willingly do. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work. With his grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Because this child, because George cannot answer for himself, we shall all together with sponsors and parents faithfully speak on his behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Oh boy, bless you. George Robert Frisch, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins to get, strengthen you with his grace to everlasting life, peace be with you. Through baptism, God has added George to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of the darkness and into the marvelous light.
And you, George Robert, the Lord bless you and all your ways from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Every year when a child is born, we usually have a birthday cake and candles. So it is with baptism. Today is George Robert's spiritual birthday. And so, Cassie, I present to you his baptismal birthday candle. And we encourage you to light that every year on this date to keep him in mind of his baptism and to remind him of his baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, meet your newest brother in the Lord, George Robert Frisch. I was baptized, happy day. All my sins were washed away. God looked down on me and smiled. I became his own dear child. They return to their seats. I invite the congregation to please stand for confession and absolution. God's beloved, let us come before God our Father with repentant hearts and confess our sins to him, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that he grant forgiveness to us. God's word says, if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Together we confess, God of mercy, I know that I am sinful by nature. I sin against you in what I think, say, and do, in ways that I know and in ways of which I am unaware. Fear, doubt, shame, and loneliness lead me to shy away from living and sharing my faith. I ask for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to forgive me for this and for all the ways in which I have been wrong against you. Upon hearing your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the next psalm.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading that greets us this day is from the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you, for who among you, excuse me, for who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word, or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds." Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not feel heaven and earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another. Even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal, let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle that greets us this morning, as Pastor Faust said, is chapter 11 and 12 of Hebrews. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who has received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said... Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invokes future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking toward, forward to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. 
But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to, to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through the faith conquered kingdoms and enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in the deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. All these, though condemned through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on in one house there will be five divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, A shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated for Pastor Fouts' children's message. I invite the young children to come forward. Come on down, guys. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Some of you say good morning. That's okay. It's so good to see all of you this morning. I'm glad you're here, and I'm happy to see you. Uh, I got a question. Um, let's see. Who here thinks they are um, the strongest person up here today? <laughs> he says it's him. What do you think? Maybe? Maybe. Okay. I'll have you come over here and stand right there. All right, we're going to see how this works. Sit right there and look at those people. 
Yeah. Still, still feel strong? <laughs> Obviously. You're going to flex. All right. Um, okay. I want to see how long you can stand on one leg. You counting? Count seconds here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at all those people. Man, they're really watching you. I hope you can stand a long, long time. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> He's strong. Look at that. Perfect. He's pretty steady. You guys think he's pretty steady? You guys think you could do it for that long? Yeah. You could? You could? All right, you could? All right. All right, you, you can take a break. You're, you're finished now. Well, somebody else try. Go ahead. Stare at all those people. Make sure you watch them very closely. She ain't going she she to wiggle. You wiggled a lot. She's not even going to wiggle. Because you're a boy. Okay? Mm-hmm. Wow, look at that. stuffy like a rock. Look at that. Who, anybody else think they could do that? Okay, you can try it? All right, your turn, yep, go ahead. He's wiggling. Okay. Nope, he got it figured out. Man, this is so easy, isn't it? Anybody else think they could do it? Anybody else? Anybody start to feel maybe a little more brave because they get to see all these other people do this? Maybe at first you couldn't do it or you didn't think you could do it, but now maybe you think maybe you could. Is that happening in anybody's mind? Is anybody's mind saying, oh, it's not that hard. Maybe I could do that. Anybody thinking that way? Nope, just me? Okay, I understand. You can have a seat now. You've, you've passed the test too. Sometimes we look at somebody do something and we think, I could never ever do that. And then when we see other people do something like that they're supposed to do, we think, well, that wasn't so hard. Maybe I could do that too. And they set an example for us. Today in our Bible reading, we talked about all of these people who did amazing things by faith, like Abraham and Moses and a whole bunch of other people. And then we learn that because we are surrounded by so many great examples, maybe it's going to be easier by God's power and strength for us to do what God asks us to do. So we're going to think about all these people here. You know, all those faces. Okay? See all those people here? Right? They've all been like your age before. I, I know it's hard to believe. Even I was once your age. Hard to imagine. Right? And look at how God has led them to grow up and be a part of the church. And so he might lead you to grow up and be part of the church too. Maybe even grow up to be like me. Be a pastor someday. Or like our teachers we're going to see later. Or our assistants. Or everybody else who does wonderful things for the church. Maybe God can lead you to do some of those things, too. Will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the faith you give me and for the examples you put around me. Help me to grow up and serve you in everything I do and every step along the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for coming out here this morning. You can return back to your seats. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God." Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Grace, mercy, and peace from our God and Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're getting ready for school to start later on in our worship today. We're going to have the rededication of our ministry staff. 
uh, all of our, our school staff, the Early Learning Center staff, our church staff. You're going to get to see just a small picture of those who are able to be with us this morning, of all of those who engage in the mission for us, with us, and on our behalf. And um, as you, if you were to come back tomorrow night, we have our opening chapel where we're going to gather together and praise the Lord for the beginning of the school year. And uh, we're going to talk tomorrow night about the theme for the school year, which comes from Ephesians 6, to stand firm, right? To put on that armor of God, to suit up and stand firm. And tomorrow night, you're going to hear a message on that text. But today, you get the exact same message with a different text. There's such similarities between Ephesians 6 and putting on the armor of God so that when you put on all of the armor, you can stand firm against the schemes of the evil one. And Hebrews chapter 12, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race set before us. Two different pictures, the same message. Dear friends in Christ, Turn to the person to your right and say thank you for being here today. Turn to the person on your left and say thank you for being here today. Now I'm going to move to somebody outside your pew. Turn to the person behind you and tell them thank you for being here today. And tell that person behind